Hey guys, Barrett here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we are talking about some super common pickleball rules questions that I get on my website, YouTube comments, email, all that sort of stuff. I get these questions all the time, which is fine, by the way. I, I enjoy answering people's questions, but this video is sort of like a roundup of all the different questions that I get. So I hope that this will be helpful for you. We're gonna go out to the courts, talk about some rules out there, and we're gonna come back inside talk about a few more and then I'm gonna do some rapid fire rules, questions, answering. So let's get started. Okay, now one very, very popular question when it comes to pickleball rules is of course all about the kitchen here or the non-volley zone. The kitchen is, is the uh, colloquial term for the non-volley zone, but almost everyone calls it the kitchen. So and to, when it comes to the kitchen rule, the basic rule is I cannot be standing in this zone and volley a ball at the same time. Okay, if I'm standing here and the ball comes over and it hasn't bounced yet and I hit it, that's a fault. A volley is just a ball that you hit that hasn't bounced yet, whether it's up here as an overhead or down here, doesn't matter. Okay, however, it's a little bit more complicated than that and that's where things can get a little bit confusing. There's actually a past, present, and future tense to this rule. So I can't have been in the kitchen and volley a ball okay it would be it would be illegal to do something like this like that where i jump out of the kitchen and hit the ball for this to be legal though i would have to jump out and completely land on both feet and then volley the ball okay so if i were here jump out i would have to jump out completely land on both feet balance and then volley the ball now, obviously we already covered the present tense of this, I can't be currently in the kitchen and volley a ball. Again, whether it's low or high, if it hasn't bounced yet, it's a fault. But there's also a future tense to this. So if I volley a ball here outside the kitchen and then my momentum from that strike takes me in, that is also a fault. So try to think of these kitchen rules as a past, present, and future tense, and it'll make a lot more sense. I know these rules seem very kind of nitpicky, right? But the thing is, is that this zone is why pickleball works. If we didn't have this zone, pickleball would be dead. Okay, now another very common rules question that comes up is with serving. So let's talk about positioning first and foremost. The serve, for the most part, is really the only shot that has positional requirements. I have to be in this position when I serve. I have to be completely behind the baseline, can't touch the baseline at all, and I have to be in between the imaginary extension of the center line going this way and the side line going that way. Now I can be on these lines, okay, but I can't be past them. Same thing with the side line. That excludes the baseline though. I can't be on the baseline at all. That's basically the positional requirement behind the serve. No other shot is like this in pickleball, except for shots at the kitchen for the most part. Now, of course, there are rules about how you can serve. Of course, there is no overhead serving like there is in tennis, everything is underhand. The first thing to understand is that when you strike the ball, where the ball is located when you strike, okay, must be below your navel, below your belly button, okay? A shot like this up here is clearly illegal, okay? And a shot like this right here is like, eh, it's pretty borderline, I can't really tell. It's, you know, it's actually quite hard to serve illegally on purpose, by the way, but that would probably also be a fault. So it has to be below your navel. The other thing is that at the point of impact, the top of your paddle, wherever that is, cannot be above your wrist joint here, okay? So if I were to impact the ball here on my serve, you see how the top of my paddle is clearly above my wrist? Can't do that, that is illegal, it has to be below again the top of the paddle now is right here you see how it's below my wrist joint that's pretty borderline by the way people would get kind of nervous this is why you see people serving like this just a plain old serve that is perfectly legal perfectly fine if you want to get more advanced you can try to dance in between these rules by serving a little bit further up but for the most part people like to do it simply keep it below the navel and make sure the top of your paddle is below your wrist joint. Okay, now another very common rules question that comes up is about line calls. I'm gonna make this as simple as possible. 
This ball, the material that this physical object is made of, must strike the paint that this line is comprised of. Okay, it has to make contact on the ground itself with the, with the paint. A shot like this, where it's on the edge but it's hovering over, is out. Okay, very important. This ball is touching the green paint, but it's hovering over the white paint, still out. Let me give you a couple of, of tricks that you can use to make line calls more accurate. Okay, so here we are back on the baseline. Check this out. Do you see how you can see white paint behind the ball? Okay, now you can probably tell from your angle that this ball is clearly in. But here's the thing that you can do is try to look at what's around the ball. In other words, the white line. You know this ball is in, not necessarily from looking at it, but from looking at what's behind it. Since you see white paint, white paint behind the ball, you know it's in from your perspective, of course. This changes based on where you are in the court and what your angle is. However, for the most part, you can watch or what's around the ball to figure out what is in or out. And by the way, make sure that if, the, if it's a close call on your side, you have to give your opponent the benefit of the doubt and you must call it in. Okay, so now that we've covered those three common rules with kitchen rules, serving rules, and line calls, let's talk about court positioning. This is one that comes up a lot. So where can you stand when you're on the court? Now, as I alluded to earlier with the serving rules section, the serve is really the only shot where you have to be in a certain position. You can't like get outside your box. Now, of course, the kitchen rule has positional requirements, right? You can't be in the kitchen when you volley a ball, but in terms of positioning, that's it. That's all. A really common question I get is when I'm the when I'm the return server, when I'm going to be you know returning the ball, where should I be standing? And the answer is wherever you want. I mean, there's some strategic reasons where you want to stand, of course, right? But you're not required to, to be behind the baseline or in front of the baseline or whatever. It's fair game. The only thing that matters with positioning is with the serve in terms of the shot. So. Where you need to be, where you can stand, you can be in the kitchen if you want to. I don't recommend it, but you can be. You can be sitting on a bench if you want. The key to understanding this, and this is kind of a cool little trick that you can do here, is it's not a matter of where, it's a matter of who. If I was in a tournament, as an example, the ref is going to be watching out for who is returning the ball, not where they're standing. Okay, let's do some rapid fire rules now. So. Can you hit the ball with your hand? No, not intentionally at least. If you drop your paddle and the ball's coming over, you try to smack it with your hand, that's definitely not allowed. However, it will happen every now and then. Sometimes you'll hit the ball with your fingers. You know, if you're holding your paddle like this, you'll hit your fingers accidentally. That's okay. And essentially, when you're holding your paddle, the ball has to hit below your wrist. It can't hit above your wrist at all. If it does, that's a fault. Can you hold two paddles at once? No, but that would be pretty cool. Do you have to call out the score before you serve? Yes, you do. However, in rec play, people typically don't care. I mean, it's kind of a courtesy thing in rec play. You should call out the score. However, in tournament play, that stuff is strictly enforced. Can you have a pre-serve routine? Totally. You can pretty much do whatever you want. Your serve begins when you begin to make that first motion, that first motion of I'm going to serve, okay? Whatever happens after that first little motion is what counts, but anything before that with a pre-serve routine, you can hit the ball up and down, toss it up and down, whatever. What happens if you hit a ball that bounces out? Well, it depends. If a ball bounces out and you hit it and you don't make the call, then it's assumed to be in, okay? However, if you hit a ball that's bounced out, and then after you hit it, you say out, because it was out, then you're good to go. That's an okay call. Essentially, the way this works is, when a ball bounces out and you hit it, you have until your opponent hits the ball, or is close to hitting the ball, to make the call. It's important to try to make those calls as quickly as possible, but yeah, you can hit out balls that bounce all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. You just have to make the call. What happens if you hit your opponent with your serve? It's a point for you. Is there a difference in scoring between singles and doubles? Kind of, yeah. Basically, the way it works is where you serve will be based on what your score is. So as an example, if you get the ball back and you're about to serve and your score is two, you're even, so you'll serve on the right side of the court. 
If your score was odd, you would serve on the left side of the court. Okay guys, that was rapid fire and those are some basic pickleball rules questions that I get on a fairly frequent basis. I hope that was helpful for you. Keep in mind that when it comes to recreational play, typically people don't enforce these rules too heavily. I mean, kitchen rules should be enforced, of course, but in terms of like calling out the score and that kind of stuff, eh, it's just kind of like iffy. So also keep in mind that people like to make up rules all the time. No, you don't have to yell dink when you hit a ball out of the, that's bounced in the kitchen. No, different colored balls are not meant for different types of play. You should hear the kind of stuff that I, that I read. It's pretty amazing. So just keep all that in mind. Keep in mind that you can go to pickleballkitchen.com for a bunch more resources on the rules. I got tons of stuff on there. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me in this video. As usual, I'll see you next time.